we now know what the mathematical model is. So let's take a look at how ANSYS is going to solve it for us using the finite element method. So if you're moving on to talking about the numerical solution strategy, so you divide the domain into elements. In this case, the elements are uh, boxes, uh, since we have a three-dimensional domain. I've cut through the mesh here to show you kind of the interior of the mesh and so that you can see what the elements look like. And you reduce the problem to determining displacement values only at the nodes. And the nodes are not only the corners, but also the mid-sides, um, the mid-side nodes. Um, it's difficult to draw here. So, you know, if I'm looking at a face like that, it's ANSYS is going to determine the displacements, not only at the corners, but also at the mid-sides to get the higher order polynomial interpolation. And, um, and the other thing to keep in mind is that at each node, it has to calculate three components of the displacement, okay, U, V, and W. So at each of these, you have U, V, W. And use polynomial interpolation to relate displacements at any point within an element to its nodal displacements. So if I want to know u at this, you know, some location on that face, it'll involve interpolation of the u's over here. In this case, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'll have eight values to interpolate. A box has eight corners and it has 12 sides. And the mid point of each of those sides is a node, so you have 20 nodes per element, okay? Which means that the interpolation, you know, will involve 20 values. Con contrast that to um, our simple temperature example where we had an interpolation between two, two values of the temperature. So it's the same idea it's much more uh, complicated in its details. So how do we determine the nodal displacements? Same idea as before, you know, ANSYS will derive a set of algebraic equations um, in the nodal displacements, and it'll do that using a piecewise polynomial approximation that is a polynom element by element polynomial for U, V, W. Previously, we had you know a polynomial interpolation only for for temperature. Now you have it for you know you have to have a polynomial interpolation for each of these. And previously, you know in the two D conduction example, we had it in two dimensions. Here you have to do it in three dimensions. So the details you know keep piling on. And each algebraic equation will relate an order displacement to its neighbors. So let's say a node has um, forty neighbors. But each of those neighbors has three values, so it has to relate it to 120 values. That's where shape functions come in. It really kind of you know gives you an elegant way and, and a methodical way to do that bookkeeping in terms of how you relate these uh, the values, the nodal displacements. As far as the finite element solver is concerned, it all reduces to writing relationships between you know one node to its neighbors. And you can write this in the, the stiffness matrix form and invert it, and answers will invert it for us, and we'll get the nodal displacements. Recall that some of these are going to be, you know, are going to come from the essential boundary condition. So for instance, for the nodes over here, you'll just set u, v, w equal to zero. And then once you know all the nodal displacements, you can determine, you know, displacement anywhere strains, um, et cetera, through post-processing. And recall, you know, when you write strain at a point, it actually means that strain for an infinite smell element located at that point. Okay, so how do we derive this system of algebraic equations? Same idea as before. If you take your equilibrium equations, so, you know, I'm just, think of this as a compact way to write the, the three equilibrium equations, um, 
So in your mind's eye, you know, when you see that, just think of three equations like that, that we had. And if you take the piecewise polynomial approximation, that is my element by element polynomial approximation, and you plug it in here, you won't get the set of algebraic equations analogous to what we saw in the big ideas in FEA. So you have to go to a weighted integral form. That's one way to do it. That's a clever way to do it. Um, except that the weighting, you know, so you have three weights now. So for the x uh, force, force balance in the x direction, so let's say you'll have a weight wx, and so you have to multiply this by wx and then integrate over the domain. Uh, so it's going to be a volume integral. And similarly, you need now, you know, you need a weighting function for the y uh, force balance and the z force balance, which is why I've written this as a vector. It has, you know, it consists of these three functions. But we know we can't satisfy this for any arbitrary w. So we have to say that, hey, you know, my w is also a piecewise, you know, or a element by element polynomial. And when you have that, um, and you can, you know, the same business as before, where you transfer the derivative to the, the weighting function, the additional complication is, you know, this is not written in, if the, our governing equations are not in terms of displacements. If it was in terms of displacements, you can multiply it by the weighting function and be a lot easier. Now it's terms of the stresses, and so you write them in terms of strains, which in terms, a term, uh, you write in terms of displacement. So you have all these like complicated factors and really glad answers is taking care of the details. And now when you have, you know, the special weighted integral form and then you convert it to the weak form by integration by parts, then you plug in your piecewise polynomial approximation and out pop the set of algebraic equations in the nodal displacements. So the finite element solution as before won't satisfy our differential equations of equilibrium, which means that if you take the finite element solution and check if you know, a, a infinite small chunk of material is in equilibrium, it won't be. As we saw before, the finite element will also not be in equilibrium. You know, in for temperature as conservation of heat, here it's going to be equilibrium. Um, so if the finite element, each finite element will also not be in equilibrium, but the entire structure will be in equilibrium. That is, equilibrium will be satisfied in aggregate.